Oh, 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 don't I look slim? Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> oh, well, that's what, <laughs> that's what lockdown does uh, to you, you know. Uh, I can't wait to see all of you, see how you've been doing with the uh, lockdown, whether you've been eating more or whether you've been eating less. But uh, it's good to welcome you. You can see where we are today. Some of you uh, uh, didn't know that we were going to be from the church. There are a few people here, so you may actually be able to, uh, to, to hear them. You may be able to uh, hear them laugh at my humorous jokes that, uh, <laughs> and not so humorous ones, uh, possibly, grown at the not, uh, not so humorous ones. But it's great to be able to, to do this. We are hoping that this becomes maybe a um, new norm for the next few months as we, uh, as, as, as we move forward. But we, what we've done is at this moment in time, we really feel um, that uh, we, we want to start building something in. We, we, we recognise that there's certain habit patterns that have been broken because of COVID, uh, meeting together being one of them, uh, obviously, but some of the things that all that brings is being church. And we're just aware, you, you know, being able to uh, wake up and do church in your slippers and uh, be able to sit there with a coffee. And I know it all sounds really nice, but uh, you know, it's not the best habit probably for the long term for us to be able to uh, for us to be able to do that. So we're wanting to create some habits uh, again, and uh, there's a certainly been a few groups that would like to to meet with us uh, and to meet in 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 that format. So we're going to be doing that over the next uh, little while. So what we're doing at the moment the, at the church building, we're allowed certain number here but we're doing that by invite only okay so please do not turn up here on a on a sunday um we're trying if you particularly there's a reason um you know if, if you're particularly uh, wanting to somebody uh, is happy to talk to you about that at the moment but at the moment the group that we're having here are particularly the ones who are either um, alone or most vulnerable or um, there, there's various uh, criteria that we're wanting to have uh, so that uh, we can offer a, a place for for some people some of you are in groups you've got families around you you're doing it uh, maybe a little bit better and uh, we want to uh, we want to encourage that to continue we also have we're going to be writing to you in the next week or so um, we're planning some different things moving f uh, again moving forward for those of you who don't know the um, family life group when they all added up the numbers there's something like 90 people in the family's life group but we're looking at them meeting in different groups and in different houses uh, for, the, for the next time, but we're hoping that they will meet in groups that then continue moving forward, that they're able to uh, meet and fellowship together uh, and go forward. And the other thing is, is I think you're aware that we have uh, the building work going on, and actually, I think you'll understand this, it, it's helping us not to meet and having to clean up and sort toilets out and everything at this moment in time. So what we're gonna be doing, we will be writing you, to you on our plan of action on what is going to happen over the next few uh, the next few months, and it's going to be irrespective of what happens with the government say about COVID. It's our plan plan for this building and for the way that we're going to go forward. So you're going to know what's going to happen irrespective of what the government says about uh, lockdowns. Uh, there may be some changes to that, of course, if there's suddenly it's a breakout in the community again and various other things. Um, but uh, the plan is is that we will time us gathering back here together to do with our choice, which is going to be the, the building, making sure that it's fit and ready for you to uh, come back in, and rather than anything else. So we may be able to change a few numbers and things like that, but uh, that's, a, that's a different um, matter. The other thing I just wanted to say uh, to you who's watching uh, online, I just wanted to say, you know, such a thank you. I, I've written to you or you had a text just saying what was in the uh, building offering. Um, you know, just the fact that we're able to uh, keep going. We'd put a little pause, some of you will remember, we'd put a little pause in the contract that if we didn't get the money, um, we would uh, be able to just uh, breathe and take a little bit of a break. But actually that causes problems because the builder has got lead times for things like some of the, the roof joists that they have to order months in advance. So the fact that we're able to um, uh, say to the builder, look, just go on, plow on, get everything that you need to do, and uh, go from there. So at the moment, I've said before, the plan is, is that they're gonna be handing the building to us during the month of August. That's the plan at the moment, you know, weather permitting, all of those kind of things. Um, and we will then need a couple of weeks <coughs> Russell, uh, <laughs> we'll need some time to make it uh, uh, 
uh, functional for you to be able to come in, you know, obviously uh, putting tiling down and painting and things uh, like that. So we're kind of thinking at the moment in September-ish, we'll keep you abreast of that, but we'll, we'll tell you the plan. But in the meantime, we're encouraging that you'll meet with people on a Sunday, begin to do that in home groups and get back into the habit of meeting on a, uh, on a Sunday, listening, we'll do it live from here and you can begin to uh, participate in that uh, moving forward. So it's gonna be a work in progress, stay with us and uh, yeah, just stay with us as we, uh, as we do that. But it's, it's, it actually is a really exciting uh, moment for us at this uh, time. I was telling these guys just before that the church is actually growing at this moment in time in lockdown and uh, uh, we've got so many more followers on the internet, uh, so more followers actually in, in practice. There's some people who haven't been around for a while who are connecting again. There's people who are watching what we're doing and liking it and thinking, oh, I could be part of that. And uh, we're just amazed at what God is doing despite the fact that we're not meeting. And imagine, well, maybe, maybe we've got to learn some lessons from this. Maybe we need to learn about what church really is and, and uh, what, we, what we should be doing. I hope so. I hope we learn from this. Anyway, let me pray. I'd love to pray for you. And then I'm going to pass over to, uh, to Jenny, who's going to be bringing a word for you all uh, this morning. So, Lord, we just want to thank you uh, for the fact that, uh, well, Lord, even for the technology that's been developed over the past few years, the fact that we can connect with people, even though we can't connect with people. Lord, the fact that we can, um, the fact that you knew the timing of all of this was in your hands. I really do believe that we are um, so blessed that we are one of the best place churches or um, gatherings for that uh, to happen. The fact that you knew about this and we've been able to program our building while that's happening, you knew about the finances, you knew about all of these things. And it really does seem, Lord, that you've been ahead of us in that. Lord, I wanna pray for each person. I wanna pray, Lord, that uh, um, we're so aware of people um, in going through their various different struggles and Lord, all the mental health issues that there are, um, Lord, all the, um, the loneliness issues that there are, the, the financial issues that there are because of this. But Lord, as always, we hand those things to you. And Lord, we look to you as a provider, as our source, as the one that we love. And Lord, we ask that you would um, be by the side and walk by each one of us, Lord, and that during this time, we would see your kingdom come in new ways in our own lives, but also in our community as well. Lord, we pray for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Anyway, I'm going to pass you over to uh, Jenny now, who's going to bring a word for you. Lovely. Thank you, Daniel. Um, and today we do have the privilege of being together in, in many different ways. So there's a couple of us together here. There's people who are meeting together in other places and, and watching this, and then there's people who are at home enjoying the together of the digital world. So I'll try and figure out how to do this well of speaking to people, speaking to um, the camera, which is a strange feeling, um, but we're gonna see how, how well we can do this. So um, yeah, it's really great to be together. Um, I think that's, that's something that we've all kind of had a chance to rethink what it means. What does it mean to be together? What does it mean to, to actually to do life together when, in a time when we've got all these standards defining what that looks like? Um, I, I know for quite a few of you, and, and I'm, I'm going ahead and assuming for the rest of you, that this whole um, situation has, has brought up a lot of questions of how does that work? What does it look like? Um, I, know, I know for myself, there's been this question of what's really important? What is really important in our life? There's so many things that were part of scheduling or doing, maybe just because that was normal. That was what we did. And now we come to the point where we have a chance to ask the question, what's really important? What is our priority? What is the thing that is actually worth the most to us? Um, it was quite a few months ago, and back when we could actually have church services, <laughs> um, when we talked over the Great Commission. So that's the, the mission of the kingdom of God. The mission of the kingdom of heaven is to go into all the world, baptizing, making disciples, teaching what Jesus has taught us. So, you know, 
we've we've got that perspective. This is the mission of the kingdom. If we're if we're citizens of the kingdom, this is also our mission. So what about the kingdom? What is this kingdom? And how does it work? And what does that mean for us now? Some of our traditional avenues of doing things are not currently possible. So what does that mean for us? Now, in asking that question for myself, um, one of the places that I keep coming back to is in Matthew chapter 13. So we're going to spend a little bit of time in Matthew chapter 13. Um, now, Matthew chapter 13, the context is it's Jesus teaching. He's traveling around with his disciples, teaching crowds as they gather. There's all kinds of different things that are happening. And we're a good way into Jesus' ministry. So it's not just started, but we're also not quite at the end yet. So we've got these disciples. They're following Jesus around. They're listening to him teach. He is teaching crowds in mass, and he is teaching them personally. So in Matthew chapter 13, he's on the edge of, of a lake, and there's so many people that in order to actually be able to speak to them, he gets into a boat, pulls away a little bit so everybody can see him, and he begins to teach, and he starts with this. There was a farmer who scattered seed in his field, and he begins to tell them this story about the seed falling on different kinds of soil. There's a rocky path. There's, there's some soil that's got rock on, bedrock underneath. There's good soil. And then there's soil that's full of weeds. So he walks them through this parable. He tells the whole crowd this parable. And then, um, and then his disciples come and say, um, that's great, Jesus. What do you mean? Like, what are you talking about? And Jesus turns aside to his disciples and he explains this parable. He says, we're talking about the gospel going out into the world. And in some hearts, it's going to be on, on shallow soil where it's going to sprout up quick and we're going to see green things growing, but then it's going to die because there's no roots. And some of it's going to go on rocky paths where the birds are just going to swoop down and pick it up and it'll never have a chance to grow. Some of it is going to grow in with the weeds and the weeds are going to grow up around it and choke it out. And some of it is going to land on good soil where it is going to drive down deep and grow. So they go, okay, all good. And then Jesus goes on and tells three more parables. Um, and he says, you know, once again, he's got the farmer. This is the farmer. And he sows his seed into his field. And then at, in the nighttime, his enemy comes and he sows thistles in with the seed. And when it starts to come up, the servants come to, to, come to the farmer, to the master and say, um, there's thistles in with your good seed. Should we go and pull them up? And he says, no, we're going to let them grow up together. And when things are grown and ready, then we will collect the thistles and burn them. And we will collect the wheat, the good grain, and put it in our storehouses. So all of these, these first two, and indeed all the ones that we're going to talk about, they all start with this, this, this phrase or something similar to it. The kingdom of heaven is like. So we're talking about the kingdom. Jesus is helping to define what is this kingdom? What is this thing? Like we, we you know, we, as, as people who are looking back and having this, this, this scripture bulk in front of us, we get to look at this all at once. He's wanting us to understand something more than just a basic fact or set of instructions. If he wanted to give us a set of instructions, he would have given us a set of instructions. And there's places in the Bible where he does that. But instead, he's given parables. So the next parable in this section, so this first section, we're just going to kind of fly through it. We're going to look at the parables overall. And then there's four parables in the next section we're going to look a little bit deeper at. Um, because I'd like to stay all day. <laughs> but we should probably let you guys go home at some point. <laughs> um, so, the third parable is about the mustard seed. And this mustard seed, it says, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. It grows into a big tree, even though it is the smallest seed. And, this, and the fourth parable is the kingdom of heaven is like yeast that is worked through lots and lots and lots of dough. 
and then it makes it all rise. A little bit, big change. So now we come to the section that we are going to look at more in depth today. So we're in Matthew chapter 13, starting in verse 44. I'm going to read all through all of it, and then we're going to go back and take a look at it piece by piece. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. And then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers, but threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? They said to him, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained of the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. So sounds like two similar parables, two very different parables. And I guess the first question that I have when I read that is why parables? Why is it that Jesus is using parables to teach this particular thought? And you know, the, the disciples actually had the same question earlier in the chapter after Jesus had told that first parable of the seed going on different kinds of soil. They said, well, Jesus, why are you teaching these people in parables? And Jesus answers them. Let me pull it up for you here. Chapter 13, in, in verse 13, this is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And then he does something. He actually quotes from the book of Isaiah. Here's the passage from the book of Isaiah. You will indeed hear, but never understand, and you will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn, and I will heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, your ears, for they hear. So Jesus has said, the reason I'm speaking in parables is because the hearts of the people we're speaking to are like the different kinds of soil. And the soil that is ready, the soil that is open, will receive it. it they will understand it and it will grow and become what it is meant to be in that situation. So we have Jesus, he's speaking these parables to the crowd and then he's explaining them to his disciples. He's spoken these first four parables. These next four parables actually take place after he's left the boat. He's left the, the seaside, he's gone into a house, and it's just him and his disciples. So this is, this is his audience is his disciples, and he's speaking with them, teacher to student. When we, when we are looking at parables, it's important to remember a couple of things. First of all, is that the reason that Jesus is speaking in parables is because that we need the Spirit of God to help us understand them. We need to have hearts that are open to what he is teaching us, and we need to be prepared to, to hear from the God that we know, because God is the same. He has told us much about himself, and it is by that that we can measure our understanding of things like this. The second thing we need to keep in, in mind is that it was told to a certain people at a certain time with a certain understanding. We need to challenge ourselves to hear it from the hearer's perspective. What were the disciples hearing when Jesus spoke to them? And then the third thing 
we need to listen for the main point. Parables can be tricky. Sometimes I think we're tempted to pick every little piece of it, put a symbolic meaning to each piece, and then come out with an equation that says this then is exactly how things should go. So maybe for the man searching in the field, we'll say, well, maybe that man is us, and maybe that field is to do with, with finding Christ, finding faith, and therefore, if we then sell everything that we own and are happy about it, then we get to know Jesus. But the problem is with that is we have put our own thought and our own mind into it instead of saying, first of all, what is the most important thing? What is it that Jesus is trying to teach his students about? How do we put that at the forefront of our understanding? So the main point for these parables is actually quite simple to find because it's been the main point of the entire set of Jesus' teaching. The kingdom of heaven is like. The point is the kingdom. The central point of all of these things is the kingdom of heaven. So that needs to be our first and foremost focus point as we look at this. What is this kingdom? Well, there's, there's a fairly long answer that you can find for yourself if you want to know about the kingdom. You simply start about Genesis 1 and read through to the end of Revelation. <laughs> That'll give you a whole lot of information about the kingdom, right? Because, because this, is what, this is what we've been given. It's incredible. But we can, we, can, we can read that all together at some point if y'all have a lot of time. But I think maybe we'll stick to a bit more concise spots for the moment. So we know some things about this kingdom. We know, who's, we know who the king is. We know who the king is. God is on the throne. Jesus is the king. We, we know a couple different names for it. Kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, kingdom of Christ. These are talking about the same thing. This is the kingdom, his kingdom. And we also know that it's come. The kingdom has come. That's what Jesus said. The kingdom is here because Jesus had arrived. And yet also the kingdom is not in its fullness because there is a fulfillment that is coming in the second coming. So we have the kingdom and yet it is not yet in its fullness. It is now, but it is also not yet. So we're in this in-between time. And this is something that the disciples were keenly aware of because we have to remember their mindset. These were Jewish people. They were anticipating the coming of the Savior, the King. And, and it is most likely they were anticipating a political king to come and throw out the Romans, throw out their adversaries, and set up Israel as a political superpower. Because, yeah, I've, I've read the Old Testament and it kind of sounds like that would fit. And if that's what you're looking for, so they're like, okay, Jesus is here. It started. This is our king. And we are now anticipating that everything that we have hoped for will happen. And so they are waiting for this kingdom. They're looking at Jesus saying, yes, now the kingdom. And Jesus is saying, this is what my kingdom is like. What do we anticipate the kingdom of God will be like? Have we, in our perspective of life, put particular form on it? Is it? Does it look like maybe buildings that are full of people? Does it look like laws in our political realm that reflect our faith and belief? Is, is, there, is it the freedom that we're allowed in how we do things and what we do? Have we put expectations on the kingdom that we might be able to see through different passages of scripture. But have we checked them against what Christ has said his kingdom will be? So let's go back and walk through these parables one by one and see what is the kingdom like? The first one, the kingdom is like a great treasure. That's pretty good, a great treasure. We know treasure. We know financial treasure. We know the times that we treasure with people. We know the treasures that we have been missing while we have all been apart. The gathering, the friendship, the relationship, we know treasure. Now this treasure, 
is of such great value that when found, this person goes out and sells everything they have, and they're happy to do it because of this treasure. The point of the parable is the value of the treasure. It's not saying that if you don't sell everything that you own and are happy about it, you won't get the kingdom. No, it's the kingdom is worth even more. It's that this kingdom is worth so much that that doesn't even matter anymore. That's not even an issue. It's this treasure of greatest price. And that treasure, no matter the circumstances of our context, our political situation, our environmental situation, that's still there. And it still holds that ultimate value. Then again, the next parable, the kingdom of heaven is like a pearl of greatest price. Now we're speaking into a time right here. Jesus is speaking into a time when pearls had such incredible, incredible value. Now we farm them. You know, you have the fake, you have the real, but we're talking about an ultimate, an, an item of ultimate value. And we're talking about a person seeking it out. So this man has been seeking out pearls. Pearl there, pearl there. There's other pearls, but this pearl is the one of greatest price. And he goes, once again, sells everything he has so he can have it. And it, once again, the focus is what is the value of the kingdom? The value of the kingdom is above everything else. Above everything else. It is worth more. And then this brings us to the next parable, which seems quite different from these first two. We've been talking about value. And then this one talks about fish. <laughs> okay, right, treasure, pearl, fish. Well, for some of us, this might be more of a treasure. <laughs> but the incredible thing is, says, all right, so we're talking about the fish, but what is the kingdom of heaven in this picture? The kingdom of heaven is like a net. It's the net. Now he's talking to fishermen. They know a thing or two about fishing. You know, these guys know exactly what he's talking about. He's like, this is like a net. This is something you use every day. You understand this. You've probably made them, fixed them. And these nets would often be thrown out, large nets, and then dragged into shore by multiple people full of fish. This was something they understood. This was something that was normal everyday life for them. He says, this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. This net that is thrown out and it catches all kinds of fish. All kinds of fish. I'm, I would imagine <laughs> Checking in with the still going. All right, all right, still working, I think. <laughs> um, I would imagine that they would probably have a good idea of, well, Jesus, all fish aren't always in season. Sometimes you, you go one place, you're going to catch one thing. You go one place, you're going to catch another thing. But Jesus has intentionally said, no, I'm changing your understanding. I'm taking your normal everyday life experience and I'm giving it more. This net, this net catches all kinds of fish. And then it is drawn up onto the shore and then those fish are sorted. What's good to keep? What is not? And this one he explains right away. The other ones he doesn't explain right away. This one he explains right away. He says, in the end of the age, just like this net, the angels will gather together the kingdom of heaven they will sort the good from the bad that's quite an incredible thing so we're talking about the kingdom right because we've always got to come back our main point is he's talking about the kingdom and where do we fit into this as as citizens of the kingdom as those who identify ourselves as part of the kingdom we're the fish <laughs> It's pretty glorious. <laughs> so we are the fish that, is in, that are in this net and we're being drawn in. And next to us, there are fish that are gonna look a whole lot different than ourselves. God is drawing all kinds and there will come a time of sorting, but that's actually not the job of the fish in the net. 
Those fish in the net are to be drawn in as part of the kingdom. The sorting will come at the time, in the appropriate time, and in the appropriate way. But we are all being drawn in as very fi fi different fish. <laughs> you can pick your kind of fish, I think, in your imagination. But uh, So, now we're going to move on to the third, the third, the fourth, <laughs> the fourth parable. And this one, once again, is a completely different context. He says, well, I guess, you know, before we move on to the, the parable itself, he's got, he's got a little conversation point, he says, with the disciples. He says, do you understand these things? And they say, yes. Now, initially when I was reading that, I'm like, oh, are they, are they just kind of saying what they think Jesus wants to hear? It's like, yeah, pff, don't worry, we've got this. I understand, we're good. Or is it that what he has said has actually changed their hearts? And they go, yeah, yes, Jesus. We are hearing what you're saying about the kingdom. It is a, it is a treasure of greatest value. And it is going to draw all kinds. Then he says to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out of his treasures what is new and what is old. So he's told them these three parables about the whole kingdom. The whole kingdom is valuable. The whole kingdom is of greatest price. The whole kingdom is going to be made up of all kinds. And then he says, every scribe who has been trained. Now he's speaking to them. He's asked them, do you understand? And now he's telling them, therefore, because you understand, here is your role. You are like the master of a house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. There's, there's, some, there's some new and old things that I can think of. The first one is probably the fact that we have a scripture that has a new and old testament. Now, when they were doing this, they probably didn't say, you know, don't forget New Testament and the Old Testament. No, we've, we've done that, that as an organization that over the history of, of Christian practice, we, we have put in place to help us understand, to help us communicate. But there is this thing Jesus is saying there is treasure in the old, there is treasure in the new. And your role as scribes who have been trained for the kingdom is to be able to bring out those treasures old and new. So here's some questions for us as we think about old and new. Have we seen what God has done have we seen what God has already done? We start in the scriptures and we see what God has done. We look out, we look through history and we see what God has done. And we also see what God is doing. There's old and there is new. Also, we look and look at maybe just even our own community here. What has God asked of us in the past? What is God asking of us now? What will God ask of us in the future? There is both old and there is new. Here's the thing. Through the old and the new, God has not changed. God is the same. Therefore, if we know God, we are able to, like the master of the house, Bring out the treasures, the treasures, the truths, the kingdom that is both old and new because we know the God to whom it belongs. Dig in, dig in is what he's telling his disciples. You must know me. You must know my teachings if you want to be able to faithfully bring out for those who are watching these treasures of the kingdom both old and new. As I went through these, these different sections, I have to keep all my papers straight here, else I'll 
end up starting from the beginning and we'll just do it all over. There was a couple of things that stood out. And now we've mentioned these a couple of times. We're gonna go over them again because repetition, I find, is very helpful to me. So in the first two parables that we talked about, the treasure in the field and the pearl, we see that the kingdom is infinitely valuable. The kingdom is infinitely valuable. This we know, this is a truth. The kingdom is infinitely valuable. The second, the second segment with the parable about the net is that the kingdom is for all sorts. I, you know, we've used that phrase a couple times in our church community, saying we are a church of all sorts. And I think it's less of a, a preference, it's less of a, um, a recognition of, of one thing or another, and more of a desire that we would be a church of all sorts, that we will actually seek out other people who may not be like us. They may not follow the same cultural ways that we do, they may not see things the same way that we do, but when, when the kingdom of heaven is the most valuable thing, we can do that together because the kingdom of heaven is the most valuable thing. And then the last parable, are we faithful with what we have been given, this truth of the kingdom? Are we faithful with that as we share it with the community around us, with the people in our lives, the people we come across, the people that we church together with. Whether it's in meetings, in gatherings, one day maybe in services, are we faithful to the treasure of greatest price that is in a kingdom of all sorts as we bring out his treasure, not necessarily our treasure, his treasure, both old and new. So these are the things that have been running around in my head as I've asked the question, what's really important in our lives now? A lot of us have experienced change. Some of us haven't experienced change because of COVID. Some of us have experienced change because of other things in our lives. But we are all in a place where this opportunity to ask the question of, are we living out the priorities that we have? Does our life reflect what is really important to us, what we say we believe. So is this the measure? Is this the measure when we ask, how are we gonna spend our time? Do we have that ultimate value of the kingdom as our focal point? How will we spend our time? When we look at What's church supposed to be like? What's, what's this thing that we, we know we're called to do, but right now it doesn't look like what we used to see and feel? But what is it supposed to be like? Do we have this value, the kingdom of God, of ultimate worth, a kingdom of all sorts, faithfully bringing out this treasure old and new? Is that what we're practicing? Does our church, when, when, we, when we do things like pray together, because we're churching, we're not servicing, but we are still churching. I know I'm, I'm using that incorrectly, but I feel like that's really the only way to, to, to say we are still doing this journey of the kingdom together. We can't have services as we did before at the moment. Hopefully one day we will again, should it look different. What is the measure of why, how, what? Does it reflect what we have in the kingdom? Are we recognizing that we are a kingdom of all sorts? And are we being faithful in bringing out the treasures old and new? And that's about where it's left me, with lots more questions than we started with. But yet this foundation, of God has actually given us the measuring stick. He's given us this way in which to say, 
are we going in the right direction? When we say, should we, should we do this or should we do this? Have we treasured the kingdom? Have we recognized that it is worth more than anything else in the world? Is it for all sorts? And is it being faithful to the treasure old and new? So I'm just going to gather us together in prayer, leave you to sit with that. Let God move in your heart. Let the measure measure things. And where, where he moves, let's let him change us. Faithful to his word, faithful to his, his treasure, faithful to the kingdom. Right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this gathering. God, whether it is a, a gathering of, of physical bodies or a gathering around your word, um, gathering and looking at the amazing, amazing treasure that you have given us in your kingdom. God, for the way that you have brought us something that is not an additive to our lives, not an addition to what we already have, God, but an invitation to step out of our lives and into your story. God, I pray that you'd walk with us this week in our conversations together with each other. Lord, that you would turn our hearts to you, to your kingdom, and to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Daniel. Wow, well, that was a, a great message for us today, wasn't it? I think, I think so. It's, I think a lot of it's where, um, for those of you who don't know, the Oversight team have also been meeting every week, just talking through some of these things about what church is, uh, what, uh, where we're going as a, as, as a fellowship, and using this time in order to, you know, to move forward. And I, I think this idea of, you know, the word also says, you know, where your treasure is, your, your heart goes also. And I, I kind of figure that uh, um, we, we need to be desiring uh, fresh things. We need to be desiring the Spirit of God to come in in new ways in us. It's a new season. It is. I, mean, I think we can all feel there's a shift in season, irrespective of COVID and those things. There's lots of things happening around the world uh, at this time, which are just sensing that there is a new, um, a new season, a new time. And uh, the, the, the treasure, uh, the king, coming kingdom of God, is uh, what we're called to do. We're called to find that treasure, we're, and we're called to actually bring that kingdom uh, to being. That's part of what we're. Well, that is the call for us to be uh, to be bringers of the kingdom into our uh, places. So I couldn't help myself, but I was just thinking about uh, uh, you know the best kind of treasure, and I uh, just figured that you know we're all treasure. You're all treasure. Uh, thank goodness we're not buried treasure. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, how to change the tone of everything, but. Uh, uh, there we go. Um, grab a coffee. Make sure you speak to somebody you haven't spoken to for a while. And I mean that seriously. Uh, you know, have a, have a coffee over Zoom. Have a coffee over uh, whichever way you can. And where you can in person. Some of the cafes are now open. Grab a coffee with somebody. Connect with somebody. And uh, I know that also, by the way, I know that there's some of you who've been watching from the UK. Hi. I know that some of you have been watching from Philippines. Uh, Gil, I've seen you connect with us a lot. So welcome uh, for that as uh, uh, as, as well. So I uh, just want to say thank you to all of those people who have been watching wherever you are in the world. So um, bless you all. I'll come and turn it off. Okay, what button do I push? <laughs>